What is going on YouTube? This is uh, LA Engineer here, the student working on trying to take over the design world, one 3D print at a time. <clears throat> this 3D print did not go quite as smoothly. I'm So depending on where you read, and forgive the fan in the background, but I uh, gotta have some ventilation for this stuff. So depending on where you read, uh, you need to go uh, somewhere 70, 80 degrees for the hot bed. Um, and the mini only goes up to 60. So I'm, I've been having some problems with lamination in the beginning. You'll notice that I have a skirt here and you can't really tell, but I actually specified, I think four layers and I think I sort of have two and a half because I had to pull half of it off part way through. I think in the future what I'm gonna do is make the skirt like five or six layers to really give it a chance excuse me really give it a chance to work in well and then I'll make the distance from the main part bigger so that if I have some scuzzy stuff that I'm bringing in then maybe I can kinda like pull it off or pull it away you know before the thing gets going right because if the skirts kind of close sometimes you you know you and the prints really new you try to pull off some fuzzy stuff and you might kind of delaminate the first layer of your print so you don't want to do that but we we managed to get through there was a couple gurpy spots in fact it's looking just a little goopy right now almost makes me want to turn down the um, temperature a smidge but uh, but at any rate we're going I think 15 percent infill so a very low infill um, relatively light duty part just kind of wanted to see what it looked like so we got through the base layer we're doing the infill now um, probably about 25 minutes left to go but at least now that we're on the infill we're kind of on the smooth the quicker stage so it'll be interesting to see how this works I'm definitely gonna keep y'all updated as far as my results with the PETG especially considering that Monoprice doesn't even endorse uh, printing PETG themselves, which I find kind of interesting. Maybe because they don't think they can get optimal results, but I mean, in my opinion, considering this is my second print and I know my settings are not ideal, it looks somewhat decent, other than just a little bit of a glob going on. As you can see, we're getting just a little globby on some of the supports. I've read that, uh, you know, this is pretty much all I've experienced. I've just read stuff, right? Um, I did read something online recently about turning down the flow just a little bit, and I might do that. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure. You know, if I really wanted to experiment with it, I would take each individual setting, you know, flow, Initial, you know, print speed, initial print speed, skirt, distance, and I just kind of go test each one individually. The only problem is that takes a really long time. Now, if I could sort of plan, like to have eight different prints and have each one run with different settings, that would be really cool. I don't know if you can currently do that, but if you were actually trying to test different print settings, presuming that they all weren't so horrible that they would actually print, it would be interesting to run if not eight in a row, at least three or four in a row, because having to load a file, even if I'm, I guess if I had the thing set up Wi-Fi, that might be a little nicer. I suppose what I could do is let's say I divide up the printing surface into quadrants. If I said print one with one setting here, one with one setting there, one with one setting in another quadrant, and a fourth one with a fourth setting in another quadrant, then I could print four with four different settings, theoretically back to back, and that would give me, you know, that would be a little bit more scientific as far as trying to get stuff together here. Um, I have a feeling this part will work. I also have a feeling I'm going to want to tweak some settings in the future. Like I said, I might go down a little on the flow. They do say that you can print at a higher travel speed. So it is theoretically possible that I'm printing at too slow of a travel speed. But then... You know, one person will say, oh, you can print around 55 millimeters per second. Then you'll read some other guy saying, oh, print nice and slow. So it's like, come on, Internet, can you not give me two pieces of advice that are completely opposite from one another? And maybe, like I said, I need to do some experimenting on that. Maybe I just need to start out 
at 20 or 25 and go up 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and just keep going up and seeing what it looks like. Um, maybe just print a skirt, like print a, have something like a really big square, right? And print like a 10 line skirt so that I can cancel the print while it's still on the skirt. And, uh, you know, sometimes it would be nice like to be able to adjust the G code on the fly. I don't, maybe some nicer 3D printers. I mean, I think this one's pretty nice, but maybe more advanced 3D printers in the future will have that. That would be super, super slick, in my opinion. Um, in fact, probably at some point in the future, they're going to visually, they're going to have some visual recognition stuff, and the thing's going to have a little camera on it, and it's going to look at the print, and it's going to pause it. It's going to say, hey, I notice you're a little bit globby. Other people, when they've been having this problem with PETG, tend to do A, B, and C. Do you want me to try one of those things? And it's going to drive you crazy. You're going to say, just print the goddamn part. Stop giving me all this advice on <laughs> on what my settings should be, right? <laughs> the future of 3D printing and AI. Are you sure you want to change the G-code? Press yes to change the G-code. Press yes to confirm your changes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, until next time, I'm not gonna bore you with this thing printing, although it doesn't personally bore me. I still, I still get a kick out of it. I mean, even though I didn't design this part, that's okay. I don't have, you don't have to design everything you print. That's the beauty of it, right? You don't have to design everything you print. You know, if I want to build a fire, I don't have to uh, redesign how to build a log cabin. I just have to know how to build a log cabin fire, and then I can build a log cabin fire. So until next time, like, comment, subscribe. Keep 3D printing. Keep designing. Keep engineering. Keep making the world a better place. Because if we don't do it, who will? Who will? Till next time, YouTube.